Aloha. It's January the 20th. It's a new day. It's Rediscovering America. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And the title of this show is President Biden, A New Day in America. And before I get to my, my guests, I'd like to just do a brief commentary. Trump has vacated the White House. In the past few days, we've seen new video of Trump's mob invasion into our nation's capital. Trump's leg legacy includes, but not limited to, attempts to normalize white supremacy groups, good people on both sides, remember that one? Zero tolerance policy of tearing children away from their parents at the Mexican border and warehousing them in cages and detainment centers, abuse of power to influence foreign powers to attack political opponents, that was the first impeachment. Use of classic propaganda techniques to divide Americans. The use of the big lie, Trump's lie. The Trump lie was the election was rife with fraud and Trump's second term victory was stolen and all things should be reversed. All leading to stoking up the anger of a mob and sending them loose to stop con Congress certification of electoral college vote. Never mind the 62 lost court cases Never mind the multiple recounts, and never mind the audits of voting machines to exactly match the paper ballots. And why do facts matter when only beliefs are required to prove your fictitious claims? Only cult star status is required to wind up his lackey mouthpieces, otherwise known as GOP senators and House representatives. As Trump exits, I'm reminded of a comment of a good friend of mine, a lifetime dear friend, a, a career police chief, and, and Scott said, the Kennedy years were known as the Camelot years. The Trump years will be the Adams family years. <laughs> and that's true, Scott. All bizarre and most surreal. Trump leaves the Oval Office with a nation divided. 74% of GOP surveyed believe the election was stolen. He leaves with 400,000 COVID dead without one ounce of empathy for this dead or their families. He leaves us as liar in chief with over 30,000 documented lies. He's diminished the health of our institutions, agencies, and debased the executive office. Trump has successfully painted the media as not to be trusted. Only what Trump says is to be trusted. And if it's not on Fox, his followers doubt what they read and what they see. Facts are lies and lies are facts. Division is the only truth which Trump has created. Now President Biden will have a great list of priorities to accomplish in a short time, a monumental task to repair an ailing economy, apply real efforts to stem COVID-19 and bridge the cultural political divide in America. Before he enters the White House today, the cleaning and fumigation crews have been busy cleaning the foul odor of Trump's autocracy out of the Oval Office a stench so strong that only the return of democratic governance and the rule of law will be effective in its removal. And as Joe Biden said yesterday, to heal is to remember. And although he referred to it, it, it to the COVID-19 deaths, we can apply it to the last four years. So let's not forget where we've been and let's heal as we move forward. And with that, I'd like to introduce my guests here on Rediscovering America. Jay Fidel, Cynthia Lee Sinclair, Winston Welch, and Stephanie Dalton. Welcome, everyone. It's a new day. Thank Congratulations you. on our new nation. Precisely, Jay. Yeah. And uh, nice, nice, Stephanie. Uh, Jay, um, to you, what, what are your comments about the Trump legacy and his exit? And juxtaposition that to Biden's entrance, his inauguration, and his goals for America? Couple thoughts. One is, you know, if hearing your opening, Tim, what, what it reminded me of is the fact that through the four years, Trump got worse. As, as all uh, psychopaths, he was always testing the water to see if he could get away with stuff. And he got away. He, he had a technique of getting away with all these outrageous things. And every time he got away with something outrageous, he would try something more outrageous. So by the time we got to the end of the four years, it was just all outrage. He took us to new levels of outrage. He tested us in every way. And, and so now we have 
his disappearance. He's gone. He's not on social media. Uh, the conventional media is not talking about him much. They're not using his name. We shouldn't use his name. We should refer to him as the person whose name should be erased. We don't want him back. But what, what is interesting is, and we talked about this on the show, <clears throat> what is interesting about this is the power has sloughed off him. Mitch McConnell has sloughed off him. A lot of people in this country, including his base, have sloughed off on him. And, and that's because there are other fish to fry. There are other things we have to attend to. We're going to be watching Biden. We're going to be either rooting for him, criticizing him. But he is the center now. And this means that Trump cannot be the center. So I think a prediction we made earlier is, is going to come true, not wood that it does, is that he whose name should be erased is being erased. He's losing his mojo, losing his power, all in the past few hours. It is such a delight. It is such a relief. You know, before we worried about the nation, we worried whether he was coming for us. We had anxiety uh, here to tell that Winston, our own Winston, couldn't sleep at night. Um, and I think a lot of other people were worried. Now that worry is off our shoulders. It's a brand new day. Whatever Biden does, it's way better than what Trump was doing. It's fair-minded. And if you start with fair-minded, you're so much better off. And that's what we have now, a brand new nation. So just a follow-up question, and that is, do we see his name on the headlines or is it going to be on page three as Cyrus Vance and other jurisdictions perhaps prosecute? Page three, there'll be so many prosecutions that you know there's no geography to cover them all on the first page. It'll have to be page three and it'll keep on going for years. And, and uh, that's a great thing. Uh, go with God, all the prosecutors in the country that'll belly up, including Merrick Harlan, Merrick, Merrick, uh, Merrick, Merrick the yeah. new attorney general. Right. Um, and so uh, Cyrus Vance and Merrick, let's, let's go for it, boys, because we have to demonstrate not only to the people in this country, not only to the wayward GOP, um, but we have to demonstrate to the world that we can make this right. Good point, Jay. Thank you. Hey, Cynthia, I'm going to go to the same question with you, and that is your impressions of Trump's legacy and exit and, and, and compare that to Biden's entrance and his goals for America. I have a couple of quotes for this. Um, but first, I want to read you what um, was on the front page of the New York Times when Abraham Lincoln was inaugurated and how very similar it is to today. The day to which all have looked with so much anxiety and interest has come and passed. Abraham Lincoln has been inaugurated and all is well. So we could certainly put in there, Joseph R. Biden has been inaugurated and all is well. So I know that that for me is a big giant um, sort of wake up call that the country was so divided then and yet we came together. And so I have hope and, and that's a big deal. Um, when I was listening to his um, inauguration speech, his inaugural speech, he says, we will lead not by the example of our power, but by the power of our example. And that just struck me right straight to my heart when I heard him say that. And then I cried through most of the rest of his speech on and off because it was so moving and, and so inspiring. And I was so hungry to hear that kind of professionalism and intelligence and and so I know part of it was because of the words he was saying and part of it was because of the hungry that the hunger that I had to hear it thank you um I'm hoping that 74 million people that voted for Donald Trump begin to feel the way that you just expressed and I appreciate you taking the time to uh, express your thoughts Winston I'm gonna go around the table same question to you um, your thoughts and comments about Trump's exit and his legacy and juxtaposition to Joe Biden's, President Biden's um, entrance and his goals for America. Well, let's face it. These are extraordinary times where what's, what's happened is Donald Trump is leaving in a capital that has to have 20,000 armed people to protect its citizens, its elected representatives, it, it's, it's, 
I, we can't say it's, un, it's unparalleled. It's insane. And this is going now. Whatever you thought about Donald Trump before, he's gone. He's going, I hope that, that Jay is right and that it's page three or page four. He's, uh, we're never going to be rid of that family and, and, and the words. I mean, it's obviously going to be there, but it provides such a powerful lesson for us of where we came and we walked to the edge of the abyss and we are pulling back and we have a sane, honorable, good, kind leader in, uh, in charge of our nation now. And he, he says, I will, I don't care if you voted for me or not. I am your president and I am going to fight for all of you. And I love Stephanie's flag of America. We are reclaiming our flag. I got this one too. The constitution, I keep it up. I think we should all have a copy of it. While it's a little bit hard to read, maybe a little arcane, I know that Donald Trump never ever read it. Um, and he saw no constraints on his power Whatever oath he took to it w w was meaningless. Today's oath, when uh, when Biden uh, took the oath and Kamala Harris took her oath, was real. It was sincere. You had uh, a, it was an unusual inauguration just because of the uh, of COVID as well. But going around and having uh, Mr. McCarthy and uh, and also uh, Mitch uh, McConnell and uh, others saying. Welcome, Mr. President. Here's a flag in, in your honor. Um, uh, Ms. Harris, here's uh, Vice President Harris, here's a flag. When you, it, it brought some semblance of normalcy that said, and I think those folks, if they weren't, they didn't have the bejesus scared out of them, then they weren't thinking right. And they realized we need to pull back. We need to gain control back of our party of sanity, of goodness. And I think we have a very very strong chance now with Biden, with his message of let's come together. We have very serious problems. We're not going to solve them by going to where we were. Um, and now that um, hopefully, like you said, we've got 74 million Americans. We have to hearken back to a time in ancient history. Oh, I don't know, say five years ago and before that says we can disagree agreeably on these issues, but at the end of the day, we need to move forward so that we can challenge, uh, tackle these really important uh, issues before us. And I think I'm feeling hopeful for, it's, I, I mentioned this before the show, I made a, a conscious effort that if I slept in past seven, and I think I was probably awake laying in bed, I didn't want to pick up my, my the iPad, but I said, I can sleep in today normalcy is coming back decency is coming back we don't have to be on hyper alert defcon 5 anymore we are getting you know that's a good point winston there was always a sense of dread every morning as i i you know re reached for my phone and, and to check the news services of what what new calamity was in store for me today so, the damage report of the hour yes and so the i damage I, report on the uh, on the hour and that's a really good point and what a relief uh, yeah, thank you, Winston. Ready. Yeah, thank you, Winston. Hey, Stephanie, same question for you. I, I just, like I said, I want to hear everyone's opinion about where we've been and where we're going and certainly what you think Donald Trump's legacy is and, you know, how you feel about President Biden and hopefully as we heal and move forward. I think that, um, as has been said, uh, Jay said, fair-minded. Uh, now we're more into uh, promises, promising thoughtfulness, competence, heartfelt concern for the nation's people and modeling of our conception of, mod of uh, democracy. However, and I, I, I'm celebrating that with my flag and also my pearls, which Kamala Harris said to wear today in honor of those gains and that model of American democracy, which is diversity. But um, uh, Trump abides. And uh, I know I've been ensconced in this bubble too. And then I'll pop over to another station whose name we often mention, but um, it's all there still. So it's clearly um, indicating the issue is the power issue and they're not gonna stop with this. And uh, that Kevin McCarthy could stand up and present a gift to to Kamala and Joe, or the vice president and the president, is, is a feat of uh, deserving the Academy Award. 
I mean, this is a man who needs consequences, okay? As Winston gave himself a consequence, a positive one, he could sleep in today if he wanted, or any day. He's given himself a reward. Well, we need consequences. We cannot stop with this. And yes, Biden wants to, uh, I heard people say that many are, of course, saying, and certainly the Republicans, oh, let's move on, let's move on. Biden hasn't said move on. He said move forward. Well, what I heard him say is, and again, it was relation to COVID, the COVID 400,000 deaths, but I heard him said, in order to heal, you have to remember, and lest we not forget. That's that's the, the inverse of let's remember, let's not forget. So let's add clarity to the list of his encomiums, okay? He's gonna provide us clarity. He told us he would level. He said that in the speech that as our president and leader, he will always level with us. So uh, that will be forthcoming. So, but we have lots of ways to go and uh, people are not gonna change uh, overnight and um, he's got the work to do. So let's see how uh, Biden models all of this for us and then how we are gonna follow this leader who seems to really have a handle uh, or good sense and intuition um, about how to move forward and bring us together in unity. I look forward okay. to it. Thank you, Stephanie. Jay, yesterday um, I saw a very touching memorial for the 400,000 COVID dead in our country. And I don't know if you, you saw that or not, but um, that was the beginning of healing is the recognition that since mid-March, we've had Americans die at numbers unparalleled. Uh, certainly exceeding now that of World War II and Vietnam War. And um, and President Trump really just never had it in him. He didn't have the empathy. He didn't have the motivation to acknowledge the hundreds of thousands of Americans dying. Maybe it was out of guilt. Maybe, I, it, But people say that Trump has no guilt. But he just avoided the topic until yesterday where Joe Biden took took the reins and, and made that recognition. Uh, where were your... Your thoughts about that memorial? Beautiful memorial, heart touching, heart rending. It was hard to keep a dry eye on that one. And it was long in coming. You know, we haven't really celebrated. We haven't really memorialized all those dead. I remember uh, a year ago uh, on this program, we, we talked about, um, you know, just reading off the names or even just the numbers of all the people who had died. It would take weeks of this program to do that. Now it would take months of this program just reading off the names or the numbers of the people who died. So it was long in coming. It was very touching. And it, it, it was so clear from all of that, that that Trump never cared, never uttered any kind of uh, sympathetic words. Um, And and as it got worse, that became more stark. And as we saw the lights on the side of the reflecting pool, it became starker still. Remarkable how cold and ugly and mean he is. Um, And and we're not done with that. And I want to mention this other, you know, this other point um, with respect to our discussion so far today. And that is, don't forget the sabotage. We, we, he has tried so hard out of that same psychopathic meanness to lay traps for us, booby traps all along the way and for Biden. And so we have to look at Biden with a, with a kind of empathy. He wants to do the right thing. Uh, there will be, there'll be roadblock blocks, roadblocks from the Republicans who hang on to the Fox News approach to things, uh, as you mentioned, and, and, and there will be roadblocks from the sabotage, sabotaging foreign policy, our relations with other countries, uh, sabotaging the agencies, uh, appointing Trumpers to serve in, in security you know, uh, agencies, intelligence agencies at the last minute. Biden has his work cut out for him just dealing with the sabotage. So we have to be sympathetic. Uh, and he's worth our sympathy. He's worth our support. We have to give him a honeymoon, uh, a really robust honeymoon for not 100 days, but longer than that. Okay. Thank you, Jane. Cynthia, um, Joe Biden's agenda for just today only is to rejoin the Paris Agreement, uh, reverse travel bans on, um, on Muslim majority countries mandate mask marrying on all federal property, uh, extend the eviction foreclosure restrictions, 
and um, put a pause on student loan payments and interest. Going to the COVID aspect of things where a mask policy is expected minimally on federal, federal property, do we start to see a transformation now from those who have refused to wear masks and um, do they start to try to blend in and, and not make such a political statement of not wearing a mask? Or does that continue in your mind, um, Cynthia? Well, in my mind, I would like them to come around, but you know, we only need to look back to the, um, the anti-maskers from the Spanish uh, influenza that you know, wiped out so many. And they were anti-maskers all the way till the end. So. I'm afraid we may end up dealing with these people for longer than we'd like to. Um, I think maybe once these levels start rising like they are, I mean, 4,000 people a day are dying. That means the chances are good that these people are going to have someone in their family that you know, they are affected by. And the more it hits close to home, maybe the more they will respond with respect and responsibility to the rest of the, you know, nation. But unfortunately, they've been so programmed by the misinformation of that crazy man, that maniac who's finally gone. But unfortunately, I think we are left with some of the fallout from all of his misinformation and lies. And so it's going to take a while for these people to come around. They're not going to just, you know, snap their fingers and, and change for us like we'd like. Okay, thank you. Hey, you know, Winston, we've got a question in from a viewer and uh, we welcome all viewers, whether you agree with us or not. And in fact, I'd like to hear from the ones that don't agree with us. And although this question is a bit off topic, um, I'd like you to address this question. And, the, and that is, would, would Biden, let's see, I've heard and seen much accept, unacceptable behavior from Hunter. Will Biden be a good father and address all of this bad behavior or just let it go unaddressed? So again, the question's off topic, but um, go ahead. That's your question, Winston. Well, uh, let's let's uh, universalize it and say uh, I've seen a lot of unacceptable behavior in this nation. Will Biden be a good father of the nation and uh, or parent of the nation and address this bad behavior or let it go unaddressed? It's a good question because as as parents, you know, you have to deal with children. His child had issues. He has said he's had serious drug and alcohol issues. He has come back. Uh, we, he's worked hard on repairing himself and he is proud of the efforts that he's made. I think Joe Biden will take the same uh, tactic with the nation and he will say, we made some serious mistakes. We have to own them. We have to understand them so that we don't repeat them. And let's put some things in place, whether it's you not so, uh, socializing with your old uh, friends or getting all the booze out of the house or whatever it is that you need to, and the metaphorical booze, as it were. Um, and in the same, I think the Republicans need to look and say, what part of our, of our party was completely hijacked? Uh, do we need to associate with those people anymore? Because they uh, caused this, where this, this, this point where we have 20,000 federal troops in the, or whatever it was in, the, in the Washington to protect our elected leaders. I think that Joe Biden will be an, an uh, excellent father for the nation. I think that he is... Um, a, a decent and good man and ev like every family and uh, every country it has its moments where there's trouble but when you have someone steady and decent and good at the helm that is something that children and as a metaphorical society as that, that we need the leader and the, the father of the nation the, the mother of the nation that we can look to with respect and honor that that will help all of us including by uh, uh, no, what's his name hunter hunter has a you know it's a good point in this is that he's come a, a long way and we will come as well with the leadership under joe biden from the disaster that we've been in uh, as a nation over the last four years and Tim, I, I really would like to add something to that 
Um, I think this is a red herring question. I think it's provocative. I think it's from somebody who would like to continue the ugly conversation that went on during the campaign uh, that Trump raised. Uh, it's like a birther question. You, it's a nagging attempt to undermine Biden. Uh, we should not have that conversation. Biden should not dwell on it. He should not respond to it. It's a distraction at best. Uh, he's got to, he's got to deal with the issues of the country, but this reminds us there are people out there who would like to continue continue the Trump rhetoric and continue personal attacks on Biden and his family. They have to be discarded. We have to we have to move into handling the issues, not in replaying the whole damn campaign. Yeah, I, I, I'll go with that, Jay. And also, if it's not uh, red herring, it's certainly hypocritical. I could look at the Trump family and we could create lists of issues that need to be brought up, but we're not gonna do that um, because it's over. Trump is over, the Trump children are over, although I understand Ivanka is gonna run for uh, governor in Florida, um, or not governor, excuse me, mayor, mayor in um, one of Miami. the cities there. Miami. Miami, yeah. So, okay, thank you, Jay, for your comment because I think it's spot on. And it's perfect timing for what we just uh, went through here. Hey, we got a couple minutes left. And, and so, Stephanie, I want to go to you. Of the things that Joe Biden has on his plate immediately, um, and I mentioned some of them just for Wednesday, not to mention on Thursday and Friday, what do you think is probably the most, uh, one of the more important items that uh, President Biden now has to grapple with and, and, and basically be successful in, in accomplishing? Well, of course, I, b I believe that that has been set up as uh, the coronavirus and the uh, response of the nation for that and the, the addressing of already the, the disastrous issues we face and not having enough vaccine or the companies are holding back or they don't have enough resources to make it. So he needs to invoke those, those uh, laws we have that work usually in wartime and this is a war against a bug. So he, he will do that. Um, I think also he has stated as, as we know his character to be concern for these families that were separated from their children. And he is also going to, in one of his early acts, and has stated this is a high priority, bring, find out where those children are and those parents. I mean, certainly DNA could uh, solve that problem, you know, pretty lickety split. But, but whatever he's going to do, um, we ought to, uh, that, that's what I believe is, is happening ahead of us. But the issue of uh, what, what Winston said, I, I like what he said, but we said lots of, about Biden. We said lots of positive things about Trump in the beginning, just reams of those kinds of praise statements. There, what, that was based on no evidence no evidence that he met those high standards and the, those criteria for, for having those values. And uh, we paid the price for it. In, with the new president, we have a long track record of his work that's on the record, okay? And yeah, so he, and that, it's in, that's- It's in the history book, Stephanie. It's in the history That's a book. whole different place to be. So um, with the, the yeah. Hunter Biden, which I hope we never hear that again, or socialism. Well, or we will, defund. we will. But, but the point is that I want to hear the evidence. Excuse me, but there's not one scintilla of evidence yet. So let's hear about that. If, well, as with... I said in my, in, my, if I said in my commentary, we're in the realm of belief. Evidence is irrelevant. You don't need it. All you need to do is have belief and whatever you're being told to say and believe. Right, and the point is also for the issues of, of the election. So where is the evidence? So once you get that stuff up, otherwise, please shut up about it. All righty, thank you, Stephanie. A new norm, new norm. Okay, hey, we're out of time, so it's time for last comments. Jay, your last comments. Um, <clears throat> eternal vigilance is important. Uh, we have to watch out for the sabotage. And this question that came in is an example of somebody who speaks uh, ab about, about what Trump would have him say or her. Um, okay. And so, so sabotage can be indirect. We have to watch out for it at all levels. We have to protect our leadership relationship with Biden going forward. Yes. Thank you. 
Cynthia, your last comment. Okay, so my final comments are going to be my favorite words out of his inaugural speech. Thinking not of power, but possibilities, or of personal interest, but of public good. And together we will write the American story of hope, not fear, of unity, not division, of light, not, not darkness, a story of decency and dignity, love and healing, greatness and goodness. Let this be our story. Thank you. I think dignity and decency are the two words that stand out of my mind. That's, that's gonna be a far departure of the past four years. Thank you, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. Winston, last comments, please. Yeah, I, I love that, Cynthia. And I, I encourage people to go on C-SPAN. They can read the text or see the uh, replays of specific speeches and times of this inauguration. And Jay's right, it is a red herring, but it's gonna come up. And these types of questions, so we just need to, we need to reframe them and we need to move forward, as, uh, I, as Cynthia Stephanie said, not, uh, but, but acknowledging these people are still out there. They're told what to believe, they believe it. And, and Tim, it is all about belief. So we need to work on a new dialogue, a new framework so that we can help people, 74 million people, we can help them move on from worrying about that to everything else that we need to focus on as a nation unified together, moving forward, rather than getting caught up in the nonsense and the noise. And that's uh, where I'm feeling very hopeful right now and optimistic. So it's a good Wonderful. day in America. Wonderful. Thank you, Winston. Great comments, too. Stephanie, your last comment, please. Jim, um, influence and change. Biden, Biden faces um, that challenge to influence and to make changes. This is not just an ideological thought process and, and admonitions and praises. This is about an area of study that is clearly uh, delineated in how it is you influence and change people and their, and their thoughts and their thinking. And we've, we've got negative examples, uh, a plenty in the world history, but they're also very positive changes the examples also. So let's get on with influence and change for this country to be all it promises the world it will be. And we'll step up into that modeling for an All righty. We're out of time. Thank you, Stephanie. I'd like to thank everyone, Jay Fidel, Cynthia Lee Sinclair, Winston Welch, and Stephanie, Stephanie Dalton. Thank you for joining us on Rediscovering America. Join us next week, Wednesday at 11 o'clock. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and we'll see you very soon. It's a new day. Aloha.